Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending on where you are, we want to thank God for today. Today is another wonderful day. Please, if you have not subscribed, subscribe and then share. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this morning. Thank you for this wonderful day to minister your word unto your people. Pray that as your word comfort, it shall be a blessing in Jesus' name. Today we are looking at the prophecy of the second coming of Christ. The second coming of Christ. Whether you like it or not, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is coming back again. The second coming of Christ. Now, the first coming of Christ. Now, Christ came the first time as a Messiah to deliver us from sin. He came in the form of human flesh. He came in a very lowly way. But in the second time, he's not coming in that form. He's coming in a glorious form, a more glorious form. The first thing you need to know is who is actually this Jesus. Is Jesus God? Is Jesus the Son of God? Who is Jesus? Many people go to church, but they don't know who is Jesus. Jesus means the Deliverer, the Savior. We were born into sin. We were slaves to sin. But Jesus came to die for us. He paid the price for our sin. He is the Savior. Christ means anointed one. Jesus Christ is the Savior that is the anointed one. He is the only begotten Son of God. In the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting life is available for every one of you who are watching this broadcast. If you have not given your life to Christ, this is an opportunity to surrender to Jesus. He is the Messiah, the Savior. He is the Anointed One. He is the, son, the only begotten Son of God. And He came to save us. The Bible told us in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, He said, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus has come the first time to save us from sin. But today we are looking at the second coming of Jesus Christ. The Bible told us in John chapter 1 verse 12 that as many as receive him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. We are sons by adoption. Not begotten son, but sons by adoption. By believing in Jesus Christ, we have all the inheritance that is available in the will of God. Now, let's go back to what we are talking about. The second coming of Jesus Christ. We are going to divide this teaching into three. The first one is... I'm going to explain what these details of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Explanation of the details of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Number two is the signs of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Number three, the preparation for the second coming of Jesus Christ. When we talk about the second coming of Jesus Christ. It is in two phases. The second coming of Jesus Christ is in two phases. The first phase is what we call rapture of the saints. 
rapture of the saints. The saints that sleep, the saints that are alive, will be raptured. We are going to see that in the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 13, we'll see there, I will read, and then we continue with the teaching. 1 Corinthians chapter, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. I read, And I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no sorrow. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive, we which are alive, are you alive in Jesus? Are you in Christ? Which, we, which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. If you are a believer and you die, the Bible says you are asleep because it's a temporary thing. In verse 16, And the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. The Lord himself, Jesus Christ himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, it's going to come down with a shout. You're going to hear the shout. And you're going to hear the trump of the archangels. Archangels. The trump of the archangel. And with the trump of God. You are also going to hear the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those people that are dead in Christ. The Bible refers to them that they are asleep. They will rise first. And what will happen? In verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. The people that are alive, that are in Christ, when we say in Christ, the Bible says if any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. Are you still living a life of a new creature? The old life is passed away. The Bible says that you, your body will be transformed and it will cut off with them. In the air, you are going to cut off with them that, have, that are already dead, that have risen. You will cut off with them. Your, your mortality will become immortality. This body we are putting on is going to be transformed. It's going to be transformed. There will be a transformation. There will be, that is what is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. It says, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, mm, it's not going to be something that we take, and I'm counting it five minutes. No. Within a twinkling of an eye, at the trump, last trump, I'm reading verse 52 of 1 Corinthians 15, and shall sound, and the dead shall rise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. We shall be changed. What a wonderful thing. <laughs> we shall be changed. There's going to be a change, a transformation. What transformation? 53. He said, for the corruptible must put on incorruption, and the mortal shall put on immortality. So then, this corruptible shall have put on incorruption. Incorruption. And this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Death is gained for a saint, for a believer. 
Then shall the word be said that death is swallowed in victory. Is swallowed in victory. And he said in verse 55, O oh, death, where is thy sting? Where is the sting of death? When you come alive, you resurrect unto life. You resurrect and you, your body is transformed from mortality to immortality. Where, where is the victory of death? No more. No more victory for death. Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Grave will no longer have victory. Jesus went into the grave and came out with victory. So we also, which are alive, or those that have died in Christ, they will enter the grave and those that have died in Christ, they will have victory over the grave. Amen. Oh, oh, what a wonderful day when Jesus will come. I can't continue with the verse. You get to verse 57. He said we should comfort one another with this word. That's what we saw in First Thessalonians. Are you comforting one another? Do you preach about the second coming of Christ? If you are in a church for one year and they don't talk about the second coming of Christ, go and meet the pastor and talk to the pastor. If the pastor refuses to change, you have to think otherwise. Because where your soul is going is very important. A situation where we don't comfort one another again with the coming of Christ. Some people are even tired of the coming. They have been saying it when they were small. They used to talk about Jesus is coming. He will come like a thief. He's going to come like a thief. Jesus is going to come like a thief. Amen. He's going to come like a thief in the night. It will be terrible. For those who are not prepared, this is the first phase of the coming of Christ. I told you the first phase is what we call the rapture of the saints. And I've told you that the emphasis of church should be on the second coming. If you are a pastor, you are not emphasizing on second coming, please start doing it. At least spend time. Let the people know that they need to be prepared. Because the signs are all over. In the second phase of the coming, it's going to come in a glorious form. That's what the Bible told us. Jesus Christ will come in the second phase of the coming. After you have taken the saints home, he will take them to the air for to heaven and they will be rewarded. Now, he's going to come with those saints. Those saints that he took to heaven, they will come back. They will come back to reign for 1,000 years in this world. Where will you be, my brother? This reigning is a powerful reigning. We are shouting APC, PDP. We have a government that is opposed, uh, Labour Party, uh, ADC, NNPP. We have a government that is above all these parties. Government that we stand the test of time more than all these parties. Government of Jesus Christ. So he's coming back. is to come and reign for 1,000 years. That is what Jude was written in the book of Jude. Chapter, Jude has no chapter, sorry. Jude verse 14. Jude verse 14. And Enoch also the 70 and Adam. Prophesy of this, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. The Lord is going to come back with thousands of his saints. Those saints have been rewarded. They will now come back to the earth. When he will come the second time, he's coming in a glorious form. He's not coming with uh, when they brought out, uh, came to arrest him, and he gave up himself, and they beat him. No, this time he's going to be coming with the power, the fullness, war. There is going to be a war of Armageddon. In that war of Armageddon, the words that come out of his mouth will be like sword, and he will kill all that we gather with the power of the Antichrist. They will gather together against him. That war of Armageddon is going to come, and Jesus is going to conquer all of them. Jesus is Lord. That is what the Bible told us here in Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. 
Behold, I come as a thief. This is the second phase of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that washeth and keepeth his garment, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Revelation 16, I'm in verse 16 now. And he gathered them together unto a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his veil unto the air, verse 17, and there came a great cloud out of the temple of heaven and from the throne, saying, It is done. And there was voice and thunder and lightning, and there was great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts. And the city, there was there is a terrible, there will be a terrible war. And the nation fell. And the great Babylon came to in remembrance before God. And he gave unto her the cup of the wine of fairness of wrath. There will be wrath on the wicked. And every island fled away. And the mountains were found. And there fell upon men a great hail. And Heavens, every stone, oh, wonderful. Terrible things are going to happen when it comes. Where will you be? If you read chapter 19, because of time, chapter 19, verse 11, you will see it there. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white ox, and he that is upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And his eyes were, he's talking of Jesus Christ, were of flames of fire. And his head were many crowns. And he had name written, and no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with vesture deep in blood. And his name was called the Word of God. The Word of God is coming in a glorious form. It's going to war this Antichrist of the world. You see war going on in the world. This one will say I'm superpower. This one will say I'm superpower. In that time, there will be no superpower. Jesus will be the power, the sovereign power. No power can challenge the power of Jesus. That's the second phase of the second coming. Where will you ask yourself a question? Where will you be when the rapture takes place? Are you prepared for the rapture? That's what will take us to the signs of the second coming. What are the signs? The signs are all over. We can see it. But we will read it from the Bible. Matthew chapter 24. The signs are all over. This war of Ukraine and Putin is, uh, is a sign of the second coming of Jesus Christ. The war going on in the world. You see famine. You see famine in Ethiopia. Famine in many countries. You see inflation ravaging the world. You see what is happening in Sri Lanka. The what is happening in Sri Lanka? Wickedness. The Bible says that iniquity shall abound. There will be so much lawlessness, and the love of many shall wax cold. These are signs, but we need to read it just to get it out from the Bible. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. He said, because iniquity shall abound. Before you start that, let me read verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciple came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left there one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Verse 3. And he sat upon the Mount of Olive. Ha, that is where his territory will be when he comes back in the second phase of the second coming. And, and he sat on, upon the Mount of Olive. And the disciples came upon him privately, saying, Tell us what shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of the coming of the end of the world. He said, in, he said, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take it that no man deceive you. A lot of deceive everywhere. People are deceiving people. False prophets, false teachers, 
people go and receive power from native doctor and be preaching. Terrible abomination before the Lord. In verse 5, he says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. A lot of men have come and say they are Christ. Some will say, I am the begotten Son of God. The Bible told us that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. Some will come, I am holiness. There is no holiness that, than the holiness of Christ. We are standing on the holiness of Christ. These are things that will happen in the end time. And ye shall hear of war. We are hearing of war. Rumors of war. These are taking place. You will hear of earthquake. Look at verse 7. And nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine. Already there is famine. And pestilence. COVID-19. Pestilence. And earthquake. There is earthquake. You hear earthquake in Eti. You hear earthquake in the Asian country. You hear earthquake here and there. These are signs and diverse places. And all these are beginning of sorrow. They are actually the beginning of sorrow. Because there is going to be what we call the great tribulation after the rapture. The great tribulation. The great tribulation is going to be between the first phase of Christ's coming and the second phase of Christ's coming. These are signs. I will know some of those signs. There are many. If you are chance, you read Matthew chapter 24 from verse 1 to the end. You are going to see many signs. They shall rise false prophets. They will deceive many. False teachers. There are people, they don't tell you about repentance. No more salvation. They tell you once you are saved, you are forever saved. Jesus Christ will cover your sin even if you sin. Even if you continue in sin. They, these are false teachers. They will arise. They will give you sweet man. They tell you homosexuality is not a sin. Abortion does not really matter in as much as it's done in a legal way. They will rise in this end time. They will begin to preach heresies. They tell you if you cheat somebody, it doesn't mean they have cheated your forefathers. Uh, so if you are doing Yahoo, bring your laptop. We are going to pray on it. Bring your phone. We are going to pray on These are false prophets. They are deceiving people. They will deceive many people. These are deceivers. He said they are going to deceive many people. We are seeing it all over. The Bible have told us, he said, iniquity shall abound. Love of many shall wax good. You can dress the way you like. It doesn't really matter. All matters is your heart. Then you dress, open your body, wear sexy clothes, and think you are going to heaven. He said, nothing unclean shall enter the arena. Nothing unclean shall enter the arena. Therefore, what are we supposed to do? Let's go to that is preparation. The preparation we are supposed, number one, is for us to check our life. Examine, the Bible says, examine your life with yourself, whether you be in the faith. Examine yourself. Number two, repent. In Acts chapter 3, verse 19, it says, repent ye therefore, repent ye therefore, and be converted, so that that day of refreshing will come. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent and be converted. Then in the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 5, he said, he said you should remember where thou art fallen. Many believers, many saints are forgotten about the coming of Christ. Remember where you are fallen and come back. What do you do? You have to also set your affections on things above. Many of us in those days when we got born again newly, all we think about, oh, is Jesus is coming back. And when you dream, you see yourself dreaming, dream about the rapture. When last did you dream about the rapture? When last did you dream about Jesus coming back to take us home? When you forget that you are strangers in this world, when last did you dream about the Lord Jesus Christ coming for the rapture? Coming for the rapture. So one of the ways to prepare is to set your affection on things above. In those days, we set our affection Deeply on things about, and this world looks like nothing to you. You don't look at the world as anything. That is that is what happened in Colossians chapter three verse two. It says, "Set your affections on things above, and not on the things on the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is hid in Christ." Is your life hid in Christ? He said, "When Christ, who is our life, shall appear." Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. When you set your affections on things above, when the trumpet sound, you will hear the trumpet. But when your affection, mortify also your body. In verse 5, 
another preparation you need to make is to mortify your body. This body, you need to constantly mortify it. Mortify it in verse 5 of Colossians chapter 3. It says, Mortify therefore your members, which are upon the earth, fornication. Let it not be mentioned among you, among the children of God, fornication, uncleanliness, masturbations, or inordinate affection, affection for another person that is not your wife, affection for the wrong thing. You see some people having affection for animal, dog. What an abomination. Inordinate affection. Then you dress anyhow. You live the life the way you want. Evil concupiscence. Covetousness. Men are becoming too covetous. They keep people because of money. They lie to people. They do people because of money. Covetousness. Covetousness. These are things and idolatry. When we say idolatry, some people begin to think, hey, I'm not serving idol. When you love anything more than God, it is idolatry. You have to be ready. You have to be ready. Be prepared. Be ready. Jesus Christ, another preparation is be ready. That is the motto of Boy Scout. Be ready. Be ready. Because Jesus told you that the mood is going to come is the mood of a thief. It's going to come like a thief. So because he's coming like a thief, you have to be ready. Watch and pray. He said you should watch and pray. Verse 20, uh, Matthew 24, 25. Watch and pray. You have to be watchful. You have to be looking at the sky. Looking at this heaven. Oh, my master is coming. Oh, my master is coming. That is what can take you off from the things of this world. And this hope that you have will purify you. In case you are not aware, this hope will purify you. Let's read it in 1 John chapter 3, verse 3. Let me start from verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we shall know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Do you have that hope? That when he shall come, you shall be like him. And you will see him as he is. When you have that hope, then you will be purified inside. Let me show you the verse in verse 3. And every man that had this hope in him purified himself. Because the purifying agent is that hope that you have. That Jesus is coming back to take you home. Oh, I will be like him. I will see him. He said, purified himself, even as he is pure. He is pure. The question I want to ask you, are you prepared? Are you ready? Are you watchful? Are you prayerful? Are you thinking of the coming of Christ? Is your affection set on things above? Have you repented from your sin? If you are still holding on sin, sin will make you not to make it. Sin will be an heavy load. It will not allow you to be raptured. It will not allow you to go with Christ. You have to examine yourself today and think where you have fallen and come back to Christ. He is a loving Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. He wants you to come back to God. Let me pray with you. If you are there, and you have vacillated. Ask God for mercy. Oh Lord, be merciful to them. Let your mercy speak for them. As they turn back to you and have an affection for the coming of Jesus, Father, have mercy upon them. In the name of Jesus, let them be washed by the blood of Jesus. Those that have not been born again, let them be born again. Let them be set free. Let them be free from sin. Sin will hinder them. Let the affection turn to heaven. Turn to the coming of Jesus. Turn to Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. As you listen to this word, your life will never remain the same. Your life will be transformed on this earth 
even when Christ come, your you will also be transformed unto eternal rest. In Jesus' name, I decree. Amen.